Brian Ray with you. Glad to have you guys with us tuning in as we talk to Texas Stars for returning Texas Stars forward technically, but Greg Rallo back for uh, his third stint with the team. What's up, man? Not too much. Pretty excited. I, it sounded like you were excited when you and I talked prior, but first of all, how did all this come about? You spent last season in Germany, and now you're going to be back for your third stint with the Texas Stars. So when did the conversation with Scott White take place, and sort of how did this all happen? Uh, it's a good question. It's uh, just kind of everything, I guess, might have been meant to be. I was kind of searching through Europe, and nothing that really caught my eye was coming up or that fit my family and, and what I was looking for takes a pretty right situation to take a three kids and my wife over to Europe so the places that were kind of come and call and wasn't really a fit for us so I decided to give Whitey a call and just say hi how's it going and, and kind of see if there was a spot for me this year and he just mentioned that, uh, that there, there might have been a chance he just needed a couple weeks to to kind of talk things over and then throughout those couple of weeks we had a couple of really good conversations I kind of told him what I was looking for he told me what he was looking for and it ended up matching pretty well between Scott White and Derek Laxdahl they're really familiar with your body of work given your history with this organization and then your time in the ECHL but what role did Scott White talk to you about with this upcoming season of the Texas Stars because every team is different you know that as well as anybody for sure. He just reiterated the fact that leadership is something that he's really looking for in the locker room and a presence that I need to bring. And, and basically what I've done in the past is just be a guy that's willing to play any role, whether it be third, fourth line, one night helping out when guys get called up other nights, just being accepting of that role. And I understand my role and you know where I'm at in my career and, and the position that I need to play. I can still play the big minutes some nights, but I completely understand when, it, when it's the young guy's turn. To, to hop in on those top lane roles and my job basically is, is to help the team win every night and then help develop the young guys on and off the ice so I'm really looking forward to that Have you taken a look at some of the signings that Dallas made when free agency kicked in at the start of July and just kind of what kind of roster you're walking into or have you yet to begin that research process? Oh for sure I, I every year July 1st is always a fun time. This year was a fun time for me because I kind of had an idea that I might have a job on July 1st, so that was nice. I didn't have the stress uh, of a year's previous waiting to the second, third week in July to find out where I was going. But, yeah, of course, I, I, I followed Dallas last year also. I have a lot of a lot of the young guys were my close friends when I was there, so to see a lot of them get called up last year and play in the NHL was really, really cool, and following their careers was a lot of fun. And then there's obviously a lot of new young guys coming in that I don't know and I don't know much about so I'm excited to kind of meet them and you know hopefully build the relationships that I had with them or build with them what I had in the past with the other young guys when you look at this roster though and how it potentially could fill out you know Mo um, you know Matt Mangine Andrew Bodner Chuck's here you know Mike McKenna from a number of years ago going back to your junior hockey days but what is that like for you knowing that this is going to be a, a little heavier veteran roster than what you might have seen two out of the last three years when you were here with the Stars for sure it's I mean I think the teams that win in this league are that have the best combination of youth and veterans you need your veterans to kind of help push the youth along and then the youth kind of help push the vets along keeping them young so uh, I think the healthy mix of that in the organization is really going to be key and then having the right vets having the guys that are willing to to play the roles that they need to play and help the young guys is also key too How's your Snapchat game? Because with all these young guys coming in, that's how the millennials like to communicate now on social media. Have you been keeping up with that? Uh, in our in my profession, uh, it keeps me young. So yes, I have Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. I have it all. Uh, mainly, I use it probably for different reasons. I send Snapchat to my kids, to my parents, and my brothers and sisters. But I'm sure they're uh, they use it for different purposes. What was the moment? kind of the instant when you told your family not just your wife but your kids that hey we're going back to texas uh it's it was so hard to to explain especially to my oldest that we were leaving and then that we were not coming back to texas and then just to have this this chance to tell my wife and my kids that 
we're going to go back to a place that they really loved and were really familiar with. And my daughters, uh, they have friends uh, that they made over the years there. So they were just ecstatic. Uh, my five-year-old, she really gets it. She understands. Uh, a lot of times in Germany last year, she'd be like, Daddy, is, are we going back to Texas now? And I'd be like, I don't think so, honey. I think we're going to stay in Germany for the rest of the year. But so it was, it was a pretty special moment 